When Queen Elizabeth II was crowned on June 2, 1953, it would be three years before TV came to the Australian lounge room. But in Britain, the event was proudly pronounced as the greatest day in the history of television. Today marks the 60th anniversary of the Queen's coronation and Royal Commentator Barry Everingham from independentaustralia.net joins us from Melbourne. Hi Barry. Even Morning, as a mate. declared Republican, are you surprised at the affection held for Queen Elizabeth? No, not at all. She's, uh, uh, people say she's never put a foot wrong. She's put four feet wrong by having the kids she's had. But other than that, uh, she's been a very good uh, monarch. But she means nothing to Australia anymore. I'm sorry to say that to the, to the monarchists. I mean, you know, here she is a, a foreign, non-resident, unelected head of state. For a country like Australia, it's a ridiculous situation and we have to readdress it pretty quickly, I would think. But we saw the high regard in which she's held in Australia and in Britain last year at the Diamond Jubilee. But one thing I want to know is why did it take 16 months for her coronation to take place? Well, you know, uh, they were in a bit of a bind then because King Edward VIII, uh, her uncle, stood down so he could marry his American uh, fiance, and then her father became king. And these things can't be arranged overnight. That was the show of the century, that, that uh, coronation. The world stood still to watch it. You know, you can say, we can say what we like about the Queen and the royal family, but only the Brits know how to put on a show like that. You know, I was uh, just out of my teens when uh, that, that was on here in Australia. And, of course, we didn't have television, but everybody was listening to the radio. And uh, Australia was in a frenzy. I can't tell you what it was like. You know, the older people particularly, people like my parents, you know, they didn't leave their radio sets. They sat up all night listening. I've got to tell you the best anecdote that came out of that. There was a wonderful woman called Ida Elizabeth Jenkins who worked for the Women's Weekly, and the ABC always used her for voice reports. And uh, she was looking, she was reporting from a balcony in Fleet Street. And in those days, the pawnbrokers had three orbs hanging from their shop, win uh, from their shop fronts to show that they were pawnbrokers. I don't know the significance of that, but Ida Elizabeth Je Jenkins stopped the world by saying, I can't tell you the feeling in London at the moment why even the pawnbroker has painted his balls red, white and blue. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine why that stopped a few people in their tracks. I'm sorry on Sunday morning family <laughs> programs, but I had to share that one. But, you know, it, it was an amazing event, and uh, we have a, we'll have another one coming up sooner rather than later with um, Prince Charles and Queen Camilla uh, when, when he is crowned. You know, they've always said that she will never be queen. That's rubbish. She has to be queen because she'll be the wife of the king, and that was a sop. To the, to the Diana lovers when they said that uh, she would never be queen, she will be, but I hope she will never, she and Charles will never be the king and queen of Australia. I believe that Malcolm Turnbull and Wayne Swan are going to announce uh, a resurgence of republicanism pretty soon. Uh, and, you know, the quicker the better as far as I'm concerned. I think it's actually going to be tomorrow that they're announcing uh, Whoops, sorry pro about that. Project Republic and Good its uh, plans and arguments for a new Australia. But do you think that uh, there will be any change? There certainly won't be any change with Queen Elizabeth at the helm because people do have that affection for her and she has been there for 60 years and we've seen her evolve over those times. I mean, she especially her entrance at the London Olympics when she, well, it was seen that she was jumped out of a helicopter. Yes, well, you see, this is, this is the changing face of the monarchy. Um, I can't imagine uh, Queen Victoria ever jumping out of anything. Well, she could hardly move, poor old thing, uh, by the time she died. Look, the Queen, the Queen has moved with the times to a certain extent, and she, uh, I, you know, being a, having been reporting them since 1978, and done many royal tours. I've had a few conversations with her over the years, and this is no big deal. When you're an accredited cor uh, correspondent, you they have receptions for you on the first night of the royal tour, and uh, you know I've done a few of them. And first time I I actually met her was on the Royal Yacht Britannia in Kuwait Harbour. That was uh, quite something, and I had a long chat to her that night because I'd been in Oman. Uh, the week before, and, and we were going down there on the tour, and she was asking me about Oman. Uh, and she's got a, quite a good sense of humour, and uh, uh, people, Tony Wedge, Wedgwood Ben once said she couldn't say good morning unless it was scripted. Well, that's nonsense. I mean, if she, if she feels comfortable with people, she'll speak to them. Now, you mentioned that she uh, put a couple of 
uh, feet wrong with her children. But what about Wills and Kate? There seems to be a, a resurgence for the royals since their um, wedding, which was a, a, a massive spectacle. Richard, for a young person, you really amaze me. You know, <laughs> I'm not trying to patronise you in any way. Wills and Kate are celebrities who happen to be royal. You know, if Tom Cruise and his current wife came here, they'd attract the same amount of attention. Wills and Kate are the most beautiful young couple in the world. Let's get that right. And of course, people want to come and see them. They have no history. There's been no divorce, no babies, no this, no that, no the other that is usually uh, associated with uh, young celebrities. But uh, the, the Queen made another big mistake when she allowed those cameras into Buckingham Palace to uh, show us how the family lived, you know, barbecues with liveried footmen, you know, running around serving steaks on beautiful uh, aged china and stuff. You know, they don't live in the real world, but of course William and Kate do, and so does Harry, and so do the other young royals, but uh, uh, the, you can't say a word against William and Kate, I know, but I look, what's their relevance to Australia? They're not Australians, they're English. They don't live in Australia, they know nothing about us, they know nothing about the way we live, the people we are. and. You know, let's not knock them for because they've been born into the families they have been born into, but let's get the whole thing into perspective. Okay, Royal Commentator Barry Everingham, good to talk to you. Thanks, mate.